I'm here with Joanna to talk about Lucifer, Lucifer 5, new record coming out January 26 on Nuclear Blast. I'm sure you're counting the days, the evenings, the nights for this album to finally hit everywhere, store streaming services so everybody can listen to it. Yes, I am excited, indeed. Does it still give you those butterflies in your stomach, even after so many records? Like, do you still feel a little bit nervous before that release date or no? No, I'm too busy to get nervous. <laughs> I have uh, too much to do talking to people like you, you know, and um, uh, but I am very excited because, you know, the the time uh, between when you give the actual album, the masters to the record company and by the time it comes out, it's such a long way to go. And by that time, we have kind of forgotten what the album sounds like, like because we don't really listen to it ourselves. So um, it's it's cool when it comes out and then we usually, you know, sit down and listen to the actual vinyl when you finally have it in your hands. And that's, I think, that's a nice feeling. When you have a physical object, you can actually hold in your hands. That's cool. Before we talk about Lucifer 5, because I have a lot of questions about this new record, I just want to ask you about the tour that you guys did in North America at the end of 2023. Um, now that it's in the past, now that it's in the books, uh, how, how was it? It was great. Um We've done tours before in the States. This was our fifth one, I think. And um, we had a ball because it was a really great uh, lineup of bands. You know, we were uh, together with Coven and um, with this band here, The Early Moods, really cool band out of LA. And um, it was uh, quite an, a great uh, touring circus. You know, everybody like, um, well, we had great fun together. Uh, and now that the album is coming out in early uh, early this year, uh, January 26th of 2024, does that open the door or the window for you guys to have a, a triumphant return to, to North America, maybe uh, later down the, the road, later in the year? Uh, possibly not in 2024, uh, I must say, unfortunately, because, um, well, we'll see. Never say never. Um, it is just have, it has become increasingly difficult and expensive to tour the US as a European band because you have to consider you know the visa costs are extreme and then um you know this last for a band or a size I mean if you don't sell out arenas or something you know um it is a lot of work with uh, basically no money to bring home uh, except for maybe the people that work you know the crew and so on so um, we actually lost money on this U.S. tour, you know, uh, and everybody around us earned money. Um, we sold a lot of merch, had great fees, but it's just that the costs, you know, the flights and everything around it, the crew costs and so on are so high that um, this is actually more uh, it's an investment, you know, a, a favor to the fans to be there. And um, also, of course, we have a great time and enjoy this, but it's not feasible at all. So it's probably going to take a couple of years until we can return again. Mm. So now talking about more pleasant things than, than losing money on a tour, let's talk about uh, Lucifer 5. Uh, I've been listening to you guys for a long time, and I, I've noticed this in the previous records, but I think it's a little bit more noticeable on this one, which is the growth uh, in songwriting, the growth in in the sound, the growth in the overall approach that you guys put in the in the album structure, it, it, I've seen you guys taking leaps forward with every single release. Uh, what do you guys uh, attribute to that continuous growth? Because it's not like it happened on one record and then not on the other. You, you guys are improving with every single album. I love that. Just please keep going on. <laughs> 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 well, I I think. Um, that is like a natural kind of progression. We don't really plan this, you know, um, it just comes from the gut. Uh, we never have concept albums. Um, we kind of just write what feels good, you know. Of course, uh, when we've done three, four demos, um, I do have in mind, okay, now we've written three rock songs and one, like three hard rock songs and one ballad. We definitely must not forget the other ingredients that make up a Lucifer album, which is, you know, the doom elements. You know, there's there's so many different um, ingredients in a Lucifer album. Um, but I guess you just uh, hopefully get better at your trade, you know, if you do it. And we've been, I guess, pretty active and um, constantly um, moving and recording albums um, for the past, 
decade. So um, I have to say, you know, um, I'm very proud of each of the releases we have done, every record. Uh, and you're not supposed to favor any of your children, <laughs> right? But, <laughs> but somehow there's something with this album um, for me personally. And I don't say this because I have to promote an album or something. Um, I do, um, for some reason, it tops it for me as well. And I think maybe it's just... Um, expands a little bit in all the directions uh, all the different phases that lucifer has um come out like for example we have songs that are all of a sudden maybe more accessible and e even that is not calculated you know like maculate heart um is a lot more i hate that word but mainstream sounding you know um and we have, you know, Slow Dance and Equipped, which is a lot more ballad -esque than any song we've ever done, I think. Um, but also the heaviness is still there. You know, you have the doom and at the mortuary mm -hmm. and, and pieces. And but you also have um, a lot of variety. You know, you have like a song like a Strange Sister, which sounds for me kind of like a girl school number. You know, it's like very like um, um, fuck off <laughs> kind of. <laughs> <laughs> a pissed off song you know and um, um i think it's important to have um uh, to keep it very interesting and diverse um not only for the people who buy the album but for ourselves too you know uh, I, uh, everything that you just said is exactly what i felt when i was listening to the record i felt like you guys took everything that was extremely well done in the previous four albums but then you're like okay let's turn it all the way up to 11 and let's perfect some of the elements either in the sound, the production, or even in the structure. Like I thought this album from a from a structure standpoint, in terms of starting with the first song, finishing with the last, it had a better flow. It it, it felt more natural, more organic. And and I believe that that comes from the experience of what you guys had in the previous, and I'm not saying the previous four records were not good, but this one just seems to be firing on all cylinders. Thank you. It's certainly really not as calculated as it may seem. It's just, you know, because we are very busy. We don't have um, like years to sit on something and really get super mental about it. You know, it just like kind of happens. Of course, you know, we put thought into how do you make the track list and, and stuff like that, you know, but we don't have a lot of time for it. We have maybe two days for it or something, <laughs> you know, so... Do, do, do you, uh, considering how organic the process is of putting the album together, like you said, you don't have a lot of time to overthink it. Uh, do you still come to a new album with certain goals in mind? Maybe, maybe not having time to overthink that record, but maybe having a little bit of time to analyze the previous album? Yeah, my conscious thought when we started writing on these songs was... Um, to make sure not to repeat ourselves too much. I mean, of course, you are within your, you know, your sonic realm, like you have your sound kind of, and you do certain things, there's certain type of songs. Um, but I thought it's important um, uh, to consciously expand that and that it's also okay to expand that. I don't think I would have put a song like a Slow Dance and a Crypt on, on the second Lucifer album, because maybe, um, I still felt like it has to be established kind of what the core of the band is. But now that people know that, um, I think it's okay to be a little more daring in a sense. And also, you know, you, you do want to progress somehow. What's the impact of the, the production on, 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 for, on a record by record base? Cause I thought the production on this album, w w I'm not going to say it was superior, but I felt like it enhanced those changes, it enhanced those little details that you guys were able to go outside the box and perhaps take a little bit more of a gamble on. Actually, yeah, the production, I mean, uh, the album was produced by Nick and me. And uh, so we've recorded this in our own studio at home. It's actually just outside this window and where my dog is barking somewhere in the garden. <laughs> Do you hear her? She probably saw a deer or something. Um, but <laughs> Okay, her name is Elvira, by the way. Um, wow. Elvira, Mistress of the Dark, but she's like this little. <laughs> um, production, yes. Uh, so we recorded and produced it ourselves the same way that we 
the, the last albums, but we didn't have time to mix it ourselves this time. So we gave it to one of Nick's best friends. His name is Robert Pershon and Nick um, was in a band with him called Death Breath. Uh, death metal event and um, Robert also has a great band called Robert Pershon's Hambaka and it's very much in the vein of you know what we like very much taking the um, important ingredients and influences from the 70s and spitting it out um, nowadays and um, he has a studio as well and um, we tried one song and he mixed it great so we're like okay you have to do the album we don't have time and when we got the album back and we sat in the mastering studio, another studio, and they have this very fancy software with these, you know, high end speakers where you can like click in between the new album and the last albums just to for reference, you know, how, how different the sound is. And it's really interesting when you uh, sw switch back and forth really fast um, that the new album sounds a lot more has more punch and punch. is crispier somehow. And I mean, the thing is, you know, we really don't want to, um, what do you call this in English? Um, we don't want to have a modern sleek sound, you know, we don't want a fancy modern producer who makes us sound like any of the bands when you turn on contemporary rock radio you know we kind of want to stay true to what we like and that's a 70s kind of old school organic sound but um um i think he managed to contain that and still give it more punch so um it's it's fair to say we'll definitely use him again or keep on that path yeah yeah it had more not only punch but it had felt like it had more volume it, it had like more texture to it which is <laughs> Uh, yeah. I, I really enjoyed. We've been talking about the sound, but I really want to ask you about your vocals. Uh, as as you look back at the debut Lucifer record, and you look and you look at Lucifer Five now, uh, mm -hmm. how would you gauge your your evolution and your growth as a singer within this band? Oh, a lot. I mean, if I, you know, I, first of all, I hate my voice to begin with. <laughs> Every <laughs> singer hates their voice. I find that amazing. <laughs> yeah I think you just get tired of it and that's why I can't listen to our own music you know sometimes you you go somewhere you sit like at a diner in the states on tour and they're like you guys in a band you know yes yeah yeah um <laughs> you know you're like eating your burger or whatever. and they're like oh what's the name of the oh, no, Lucifer and then they you know they put it on YouTube on the TV you know in, in the diner and it's like oh no it's us you know <laughs> <laughs> They think they do you a favor and that they torture you with your own, you know. Um, and oh, of course, I see a development, you know. Um, <clears throat> um, I think I, I was always kind of, I'm not naturally a good singer. I just always loved singing. I think I have more of a pop voice, um, which is very unfortunate because I would prefer to have a very rock and roll voice. Um, but somehow it always, you know, clears itself up. So, um I have done recordings where I sing pop, you know, I've done like um, TV commercials and stuff like that as well, um, because my voice lends itself very easy to that, um, unfortunately. And I've smoked um, my whole life, you know, and um, I've given up four months ago now, but um, all the cigarettes and drinks did not turn me into Lemmy, you know, and... <laughs> <laughs> somehow but i mean meanwhile luckily because i'm getting older you know so the voice ages um but i think in a good way and um i definitely think um even though um i hate my voice <laughs> that i hate it less and less with each lucifer album it, on, on this record i felt like you you were more versatile than in previous records i felt like you you had more of a warm delivery with your voice and another thing that I noticed on this record vocally that I thought was really cool is that you created a lot of nuances in terms of the atmospheres of the songs from song to song and within the songs, just with the way you were delivering the lyrics, just the way you were singing, you were telling a story that matched what I was hearing in the sound. And that's not always the case. Sometimes the vocals fall more of a linear approach, regardless of the ebbs and flows of the sound. And I thought on this record, you were you were more going wherever the current was taking you, and that felt more natural to me as a listener, uh, listening to you perform that way. Do you do you see that that difference on this record from from your own perspective? 
Uh, thank you for noticing. Yes, of course. I mean, this is very conscious. You know, I'm very um, anal and detailed when it comes to recording vocals. Um, it starts with um, making the demos for the songs. And once I have finished the demo, I kind of want to recreate the same thing in the studio when I record the actual album track. And then sometimes it's annoying because then it's like, oh, but it doesn't sound exactly like on the demo, you know, because you start to get fond of it. Um, um, yes, absolutely. I think the older you get, the more heartache you go through. And that shines through in a voice. Absolutely. And I think that you probably have that, you know, with other with other singers. Um, yeah, of course you do. Um you know, when you hear these like last Johnny Cash recordings and stuff, he became really old and his voice very vulnerable and brittle and stuff. And I love that, you know, when, when you hear that. But I think you are not really, um, it takes years and life experience and, um, you know, your heart breaking over and over and things happening. I think for those, it's like um, lines on the face, you know, same thing, I think. They tell a story. They definitely tell a story. Uh, who, who? I know you don't like your own voice, but who has been your biggest influence vocally when you look at out, the outside world? Do you, do you have somebody that that's played a big role in in how you approach a record vocally? There's so much different music and singers that I like, um, and I I think they are all very diverse also. So I find it very interesting when somebody has their very own style. Um, I mean, you know, of course, there's the obvious ones. I love, you know, 70s uh, and Wilson Hart uh, vocals. You know, I love Robert Plant and I, uh, I'm i a big Stones fan. I think it's very interesting what some British boy can do, you know, throughout his career with his voice, you know, Um I love Stevie Nicks. Um, I love Patti Smith, uh, Blondie. There's so many different um, voices and I love them all for um, for what they are. I think important is that somebody's not going through the motions and that they are versatile. Absolutely. Um, I think that's when you see when somebody is a good singer, you know, because they, um, they take Blondie as an example. She has so many different types of voices, you know. She has this very... Like, a crystal clear high pop voice and then she can be snotty and punk and um you know and uh, Mick Jagger you know uh, I love that um I love voices that are also maybe a little bit imperfect and somebody who has created their own style and their own uh, shtick because you have a lot of bands nowadays that sound very generic just because um like modern bands you know because the singer tries to sound um almost formulated like mm -hmm. you know x and Y. it's like um when i turn on modern rock radio um there's like these all american bands you know and they all have the same style of singing and i think that's really boring because I, when i, I have to agree with you yeah you know, I mean, like all these like, you know, Nickelback and like all these American um, mainstream rock bands, they have, I mean, you could really exchange the guys kind of. Yeah, it's like know. a like burgers. I mean, McDonald's, Burger King, <laughs> Harvey's, they're slightly different, but at the end of the day, it's all the same. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So and you know, when I, <laughs> it's true, I actually always say that the McDonald's of so-and-so when something is very generic. Um <clears throat> Yeah, but because, you know, I grew up, um, uh, I'm born in 79, so my childhood was in the 80s and 90s, and even pop music back then was so much more interesting and diverse. I grew I up with MTV, you know, and you, you had like, you had a Madonna and a Michael Jackson and all these things, and it was so um, interesting, you know. Also David visually. Bowie too, yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. I was born in 78, so we're... we're uh... We're we're children of the same era, so I I totally get what you're saying. Pop, pop music and and even new wave in the '80s was a lot more engaging, a lot more interesting because people were not bands were not trying to copy each other. They were trying to outdo each other, and they were exactly. trying to be and they were trying to be unique and different versus finding what works and then let me just copy what works because you know because that works. And and I think that kind of disappear now people are more willing to copy what somebody else is doing 
versus trying to create their own sound and their own image. Yeah, and that's not rock and roll to me, you know. I and I agree. I agree. And mm -hmm. funny enough, we're we're born around the same time. We're also mm -hmm. children of the same era. I, I have a love affair for the for seventies music, uh, late sixties, seventies music. Sometimes I feel like I was born at the wrong time. Uh, okay. Do you feel that as well? I always say that I'm born too late. Absolutely. I wish I was like a teenager in the. 60s and then you know um in my 20s in the 70s perfect in the 80s in my 30s great you know i agree with <laughs> you I, I happily you know um buy myself a coffin um soon just to have lived in the right decades you know <laughs> which is funny i actually um, bought a coffin today you did <laughs> Yes, I did, um, because we have um, a record release party on release day on January 26th here in Stockholm. And I thought, okay, record release party sounds so boring and generic again, you know. So how can I be different again? <laughs> so I made it the funeral service for Lucifer 5. And of course, when you have a funeral service, you need a coffin, right? So I, I, hope, you, I hope you went out and bought it yourself, didn't order from... I, I don't want... What happened with Spinal Tap to happen with you? And then when you get on stage, the coffin is really small. I hope that's not the case. I hope so, too. I hope it fits me because um, it's funny. It, it happens to be my birthday party. And I thought, wouldn't that be kind of cool if I actually had my own, uh, like, if I bought my own coffin for my birthday? And then I have it with me. And then, you know, when I die, Nick doesn't have to worry about buying a coffin because I already have one. I'm very German and efficient, as you can I see. I know. I, I can tell. You're already thinking ahead. How can I save <laughs> money? How can I save time and just be very efficient right now? That That is definitely very German of you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I know. <laughs> you, you guys also have a, an upcoming tour, Satanic Panic Tour. By the way, I don't think you could come up with a better name. I love I, I, I love the, the the name of the tour with uh, Angel Witch. Uh, do you do you prepare differently from tour to tour, or you have a routine that you follow? Prepare what? What do you mean? Like prepare yourself mentally, physically, vocally for the demands oh. of being on the road and playing, you know, all of these different shows. Uh, not really, I because I don't have time. You know, we are a DIY band, which means I manage. So up until the beginning of the tour, I will be busy sitting by my computer here and um, answering emails and fixing logistics and talking to people like you. And um, and by the time I have to pack my bags, I'll be stressed out and wonder if I have everything that I need. <laughs> so, yes, I mean, we rehearse. Um, we have like three, four, five rehearsals uh, before a tour, depending how long the gap was before. Um, and that's kind of it. Um, there's a few things that you have to buy, you know, maybe I need a new eyeliner and <laughs> I don't know. But um, I mean, ideally, you know, because I noticed that um, I gained some kilos since I stopped smoking for four months ago. And um, then we were touring the States. And of course, you know, the temptation uh, is big in America. So my plan was to actually, you know, get on the tread treadmill and shed, you know, uh so that i'll be able to squeeze into my stage suits you know but um i think uh i just have to wear those dresses again you know <laughs> Listen, <laughs> because you, don't, you don't look you, you look great you, you don't look a day over 25 so uh i i think you have to look at that as uh baggage Instead of looking at it as weight, you look at it as baggage that you just carried with you from your emotional experiences. That sounds horrible. I don't want baggage either. <laughs> Not that type. <laughs> Listen, well, anyways. I, I quit drinking um, <laughs> at, at the beginning of it. was my New Year's resolution. I quit drinking. Uh, and my uh, not because I quit drinking, but I've had like the worst start of the year possible. Everything that could go wrong in my life has gone wrong. And it's like I quit okay. drinking. I don't need the world or 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 life in general to make me want to drink. But I feel like I'm battling now on two fronts. I'm battling me wanting to drink and then the world throwing crap at me that makes me want to drink. So sometimes, you know, you, you have to kind of, you know, give yourself a little bit of a break. Don't be too hard on yourself. That's what I'm trying to tell you. 
That's super nice. Thank you very much. That's I should take that more to heart. Nick, Nick says that too. I think I'm a little bit of a perfectionist, but the good thing about that is that um, um, that translates to how we treat our records. <laughs> That's true. That's true. You, like you said earlier, you you kind of need those experiences then to translate to the music that you create. And let me tell you this. You guys created a phenomenal album with Lucifer 5. Uh, mm -hmm. I absolutely love it. I, I know it's the uh, the cliche to say that because it's the new record. It's the best record. But literally, this is the best Lucifer record you guys have ever released. So congratulations on putting together such a phenomenal album. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. And take good care of yourself. Treat yourself like I said, you don't look a day over 25. You look lovely. Oh, when can I talk to you again? <laughs> <laughs> Anytime Just you want. <laughs> take note of this guy. <laughs> Anytime you want. I, it's, it's been a pleasure. Thank you very much for taking the time. I really appreciate it. And uh, I hope to see you guys on the road soon, either in Europe or in North America at some point in time. Take care. Thank you. You too. Bye. Bye.